Yo guys, what's going on? And welcome back to another video today about Wolf Career episode number two at the Chinese Grand Prix, and we are here for practice. Of course, I said I was going to get these videos out every Sunday, but they I actually made this one. Uh, well, I'm making most of them pretty quickly, so maybe twice a week. Obviously, I've got a series beside this, so obviously it won't be daily. But I'm going to try and do daily videos, but. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work hard and just try and go for it. Why not? But anyway, we are at the Chinese Grand Prix, a track that I'm really not too fond of, especially in this game. Um, I, I did a couple laps before I recorded this career mode just to try and get used to the track and learn the gears. And there's one specific corner that I'm sure you'll notice throughout this race weekend that I really wasn't a fan of. But as we're going through the practice programs, here is the track acclimatization. I can never say that word correctly, but we got through it. And it was actually turns one and two that I was really struggling with. That apex in particular, as you saw there, and that actually ruined my line through turn three as well. But I just could not get the speed right coming into turn two. Or, well, I got the gear right, but I'd either lose the back end or just break way too early. And you can see I actually struggled going onto the straight there, completely missed the. Uh, the marker you have to go through but eventually we do complete the track acclimatization i'm still struggling with that word but i'm just going to breeze past it i'm not going to redo that clip i'm just going to run I'm just, I'm just going to run with it here is the tire wear test which was actually quite surprising purple on the first lap so the tire wear test definitely a lot easier on this game as you go through to the qualifying uh simulation i think purple lap time again so it was actually the first practice program we struggled with the most, which was, well, some see it as the easiest, but at this track, I struggled with it the most. But here is the fuel run. You can see Bottas getting a little bit in the way, and he just really bothered us through the third sector. You can see making us go on the outside, and when you're trying to save fuel, this isn't very helpful at all. We're side by side of him now, coming into the uh, final corner. We've got the inside line, and we're going to force our way through, force him off track. But we're still, we slow, we try and slow down to get the fuel back, but yeah, the fuel and the track climatization is the ones I really struggle with. And I'm still struggling to say that word, let alone the practice program. But at the end of practice, we finish in P6, the only person to set a super soft run. So it's not very representable of our time, but finishing P6, finishing ahead of our teammate, it's, pro it's a promising start to the race weekend at a track that I'm really not a fan of. But as we fast forward to qualifying, here is our fastest lap time and fastest lap in qualifying. DRS as we cross the line and go down the pit straight, heading down to turn number one. You shift down to fifth relatively early and then down to third for turn number two. You can see we run very, very wide. We don't run off track though. We manage to keep it, keeping it in fourth and then shifting down to third to get the turn in. Now turn three, shifting down to second to hug the curb on the inside. Try and avoid as much wheel spin as possible as you exit turn number four. Now heading down to turn number five and six. Going down, we're gonna be going down to second for this corner from seventh. You need to rev out in seventh, don't go up to eighth, otherwise you will lose quite a bit of time. But avoiding wheel spin once again as we head through the second sector. Keeping to the right hand side as much as possible and then holding it in seventh. Hugging the curb and cutting it a little bit, but we don't lose the back end, luckily. Shift now to fifth for the next corner and fourth for the following corner. I'm missing the apex quite a bit. It, I mean, I'll admit this wasn't a very good lap at all. But we make it through the second sector, keeping it in seventh and then shifting down to third for turn number 11. And this is a very difficult corner. You want to get the power on as soon as possible. And I think we actually did pretty well, although we run a little bit wide, but that should help us carry the momentum around down the straight now. In the Renault, it's not overly bad in a straight line, I'd say. I mean, it's a pretty well rounded car. So we didn't lose too much time down this straight and our engine components really aren't that worn either but shifting down to second, four of the hairpin, clipping the apex and almost losing the back end there. Got to be careful under acceleration but heading down to the final corner now, taking it in fifth, clipping the apex nicely, DRS open on the exit and we're going to cross the line, we're going to go provisional P3 and that was our fast lap in qualifying, now let's go to the race. Before we go to the race, however, let's have a look at the starting grid. It was Valtteri Bottas taking his first ever pole position with Sebastian Vettel second, Lewis Hamilton third, and Raikkonen starting in fourth. Verstappen starts in fifth with Felipe Massa next to him. Ricardo and Stroll both getting beaten by their teammate. Nico Hulkenberg will start in ninth position ahead of Roman Grosjean, Kvyat, and Magnussen. 
The Force India's Lockout Row 7 of Carlos Sainz and myself starting the 15th and 16th, not good qualifying for us. And it's the two McLarens starting ahead of the two Saubers once again. Now we've run through the starting grid, let's go to the race. So here we go, we have three lights, four lights, five lights. And it's lights out and away we go, it's been a fairly average start for us. We haven't got off the grid very well at all. Obviously Danfield, we need to make up positions fairly quickly. On board of us now, heading down to turn number one, we're going to take the, to uh, hug the inside line. And you can see all the cars just, I don't know, get held, uh, getting held up very, very poorly here. Hamilton is off on the inside. I think he got hit by someone. Unfortunately, we don't have a replay camera of that. But out of turn three and four, we find ourselves up into the top ten. And we couldn't really ask for a better start than that as we head into sector two. We're going to be right behind our teammate, Nico Hulkenberg. A little bit of contact with Grojon on our outside there. But it's looking like it's going to be another teammate battle in the first couple of laps. Hopefully we can get past it, although he might be able to pull away. He's got the slipstream ahead, so we're going to have to see what happens in the race. Both of us going for our first points of the season, so there won't be any team orders just yet. But as we head on to lap number two, Exxon's turns three and four. We are right behind our teammate already, so hopefully we can get past him. There's actually a big pack ahead, so we could make up some serious positions here. As we head down to turn number six, we're going to go for a dive bomb up our inside and up Max Verstappen's inside. We make the move stick, we're now side by side with the Red Bull. Through sector two, we have the, the uh, uh, outside line, sorry, but we make the move stick. And that is us up into seventh position now, so we're really tearing through this field in the opening couple of laps. Hopefully we'll be able to hold it. We're sticking with the one-stop uh, strategy as we started in 16th place, so hopefully we can hold on to the tyres at the end of the race. But we're right behind Lance Stroll now. So Stroll, another person having a very good race in the opening couple laps, but you can see he won't have any slipstream down the straight. There's no one, well, there's definitely no one in range, and we are right behind him as we head down, the, but we are right behind him as we head onto the main straight. We're going to have slipstream, and we should easily make this pass. Inside line for us, he's on the fast tyre, but straight line speed, we're actually going to be side by side and we might not actually make the move. We'll have to dive the inside into the hairpin, although we're slightly ahead of him down the straight. We're slightly pulling away. We will have the inside line for the hairpin and it looks like it's going to be an easy move for us. And that's us up into sixth place. So next up is Daniel Ricciardo, quite far ahead. So it looks like we're going to have to settle for sixth position for now. We're going to have to try and pull away from Stroll, however. With DRS, he will easily be able to take us down the straight. So we're going to have to continue to push and hopefully get a second gap on him. Slipstream isn't overly strong in this game, so we might be able to just defend him for now. But heading through turn number one, we just run wide onto the grass, and we're going to lose a position to Stroll, and we might even lose position to Verstappen. There goes Stroll, and now Verstappen is right behind us. We might actually lose uh, seventh position here. We get grass on tyres and run wide out of turn three, and we're back down to eighth position. Luckily, our teammate doesn't get past us. But later on, lap three, we are right onto the back of them again, down the straight. Verstappen is battling Stroll, and they're going to be side by side through the hairpin by the looks of it. We're just behind, waiting for him to make a mistake, closing up to them massively in the braking zone. Can we get Stroll on the exit, trying to get better traction? We're going to be on the outside through the final corner, but he does pull out of it. Back up in the seventh place we go, and now onto the back of the Red Bull of the Sap and DRS Open. Do we have the straight line speed to change him into turn number one? We're closing. It looks like we're going to go to the outside, but he leaves us just about enough room. There's a little bit of contact. We can't hold it on the outside, and it's looking like Verstappen might just be able to pull away. Obviously, he's in the quicker car, so that was really our only chance to try and overtake him. And through Sector 2 now, I'm sure he's going to pull away from us. And now as we move on to lap number 7, the Super Soft Runners are starting to come into the pits. So that's going to promote us to P5. So this is the stage to race where our strategy starts to pay off. On to lap number 8, more cars are in the pit, and this is going to promote us to P5. number five, So I actually got it wrong last time. But that promotes us to P5. So just like in Australia, lap after lap, cars coming into the pit and promoting us up positions. This time it's going to promote us to P number 4 as Bottas comes into the pit. So I don't think we'll be able to hold him back at the end of the race. But onto the next lap, P3 for us as Verstappen and I think Vettel comes into the pit. Vettel coming out of the pit now. Are we going to get out ahead of him? Very nearly um, hitting the back of him. We run a little bit wide and he actually holds, uh, holds us up quite a lot through turn 2. But we have to settle for P3 at the moment. Hopefully we'll be able to get a little bit of his slipstream and pull away ever so slightly. It might help us just a little bit to gain a couple temps. But on to lap number 12 now as we come onto the main straight. You can see we've got Bottas right behind us on the super soft tyre. So I had no intention of fighting him. As we come onto the main straight at the side, I'm just going to let him pass. I'm going to move to the inside eventually. There we go. 
and ease off the throw ever so slightly and let the Mercedes pass. He would have just lost us so much time if we had battled him, so there was no point in trying to hold back that Mercedes. Both the Ferrari and Mercedes are just rockets in a straight line and just in general. So that demotes us down to P4, but still a very strong position to be in at this stage of the race. Yellow flags are out as our teammate Nico Hulkenberg is out of the race. So the first retirement for a Renault in this season, that actually caused the virtual safety car. Here is a replay of what happened to our teammate. I'm guessing it's an engine failure given how he's all alone. And heading down to turn number six. Yep, he pulls off to the side. There's no smoke, but he is out of the race, unfortunately. So it's going to be all down to me to score points for Renault today. And at the end of the virtual safety car, I decide to come into the pit to fit the medium tyre for my one and only stop. As we head into the pit lane, you can see I'm actually going to get this spot on. I'm, I'm pretty sure it didn't go green, but I, I will take it nonetheless. I didn't get a penalty, so we come in for our one and only pit stop. We are in a very strong position at the moment, so we could score some very big points if we can just keep it on track and not make any silly mistakes. We exit the pit, a very good pit stop from the crew. And where are we going to get out on track? Keep an eye on that top left, and you can see we actually do make a silly mistake and don't turn off the pit limiter straight away, so we lose quite a bit of time there. We're kind of on P7, so still quite a strong position to be in. If things stay as they are, we will score six points for the Renault team. Although we do have Lewis Hamilton behind us on the super soft tyre, so we're probably going to get demoted down to P8. You can see onto the main straight we go. I should have done what I did with Valtteri Bottas, but I decide just because I've made all my pit stops to have a little bit of fun and we're going to squeeze him as he goes past us. Obviously, he's got the fastest car and he does get through. But very, very close to making contact there. And actually, we have a little battle of him. Round the outside, we try and go at the hairpin. And we're actually going to be side by side as we head down to the final corner. Will we make a move up his inside like we did in practice to his teammate? We try and hold up the inside, but he does get past us. So we would have gone down to P number eight. However, Kimi Raikkonen is out of the race and he's in the middle of the track there. Luckily, Ghost is. Let's have a look at what happened to him. You can see he is going to come into the pit at the end of his lap. But as he comes into the pit, smoke has come out of the back of his car and that's going to be an engine failure for the Ferrari. And because he came into the pit, he actually did spawn onto the track. But that promotes us to P number 7, which soon becomes P number 4 as all the two stoppers come into the pit. And we go up to 4th position for Stappen ahead of us on the one stop. But we are now in a net P4 and anyone that tries to overtake us, we are battling 4th position. So we're really going to have to drive aggressively if we want to hold on to this 4th place. Ricardo is behind us on the soft tyre, so he might catch us to the end. But we make a little bit of a mistake getting onto the grass here. Losing... A little bit of time, well, quite a bit of time actually, but I think there was about a 10 second gap between myself and Ricardo, so as long as we don't do that too many times, we should be good, but I think that was Lance Stroll out of the race. I'm guessing that is an engine failure again. I don't think that causes a safety car, but looking at Lance Stroll now, this means a Williams has retired from both races at the start of the season, and I'm guessing it's an engine failure. He's not really near anyone. Yes it is, smoke coming out the back of his car and that is one Williams out of the Chinese Grand Prix. And when I saw this I was actually really hoping it didn't cause a safety car because I knew I'd lose a hell of a lot of time and a hell of a lot of positions. But luckily the safety car does not come out so we are free to just complete the following laps and just sort of relax. We weren't really under any pressure. Ricardo was catching but, but only by a couple attempts a lap and I knew if I just kept up the pace I could come home in a very respectable P4. But Coming out the third corner, that's Pascal Wehrlein now out of the race. On board of him now, coming down the straight, and that's another engine blowout for another car. So three different engines have blown this race. And just like when Stroll retired, I was just hoping there wasn't a safety car. Luckily, there wasn't. And after those retirements, it was actually a very boring race for me. I mean, Ricardo was a couple seconds back. Verstappen was a little bit ahead. I could see him, but I just didn't have the pace to actually catch on to the back of him so I was just uh, completing lap after lap just hoping that my engine parts didn't fail me obviously they're not very worn at the moment but I didn't know how worn they had to be to actually you know fail so I was just driving cautiously trying to minimize the wear throughout these laps and as we come on to the final lap we're still in P4 and we're coming through the second sector now so we still got about half a lap to go 
our wear is looking good but Sebastian Vettel has already finished the race so not nearly as far ahead of us as he was in Australia but still at least a sector ahead of us. The Ferraris and the Mercedes looking incredibly dominant this season but as we come around the final corner we're going to take 4th position and 12 points for Renault in our second race of the season. Fantastic race. A very boring race from my point of view but still a very strong position. We won it on strategy luckily and that's really going to help us in the standings. Great effort there from Ferrari to take the victory today. And Anthony Davidson, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralized. I mean, do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. And as we can see, it's time for the podium. And as the drivers make their way out, there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step. Fantastic win for Ferrari. So there you go, here are the race results. Sebastian Vettel takes a win from Bottas, Verstappen and myself. Hamilton takes 5th position with Ricardo 6th, Massa 7th, Sergio Perez 8th, Kevin Magnussen 9th and Roman Grosch are making a double points finish for Haas once again for the second race in a row. They might actually hold on to that 4th place finish if they can get some decent results later on in the season. But here are the driver standings after that performance. Vettel leads on 40 points with Bottas in 2nd, Hamilton in 3rd on 28 points. Raikkonen just 3 points behind him on 25 with Max Verstappen and Ricciardo making it 5th and 6th for Red Bull. We Skyrocket do 7th position with a 4th place finish and 12 points to our name. Jumping ahead of Roman Grosjean in 8th with Felipe Massa 9th on 6 points and Sergio Perez also on 6 points in 10th position. Looking at the bottom half of the standings we've got Espen Ocon in 11th with 4 points and Kevin Magnussen. 2 points finishes to his names but on 3 points sits in 12th place in the standings. And finally the non-point scorers Lance Stroll on 13th, the 2 Toro Rosso solo next. Hulkenberg will be disappointed not to score points here as he was in a very good position until that engine blowout cost him quite a decent number of points. And finally it's the two McLarens followed by the two Salbers. And finally looking at the Constructors Championship, Ferrari lead on 65 points, 7 points ahead of Mercedes on 58 points. Red Bull once again in the middle of nowhere, 39 points to their name, well ahead of Haas but well behind Mercedes. Haas remain in 4th position but now joint point scorers with Renault, both on 12 points. Force India all the way down to 6th position only on 10 points, they really need to improve their results if they want to finish in 4th place. Williams all the way down to 7th with just 6 points to their name, only 1 points finished this season. That's very disappointing for the Williams team, but even more disappointing for the likes of McLaren, Torosso and Sauber who still yet to score points. Well guys that's going to be it for this video, if you did enjoy remember to smash the like button and subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you guys for watching and see ya!